My name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor and I'm on a mission to rebuild and restore this 110 year old classic sailing yacht, Tally Ho. Right now there's four of us here staying in isolation from the outside world. We've got Pete Stein, another professional shipwright, Patrick Kingshill, who is an artist and volunteer on this project, and of course my girlfriend Cheka. And this week we're going to be installing the first of the deck beams, so starting to make the deck structure. Now behind me, I've got part of one of the old beam shelves. You can see that some of the beams are completely removed and we can see the joinery underneath and some of the beam ends are still in there. But on the ones which are gone, you can see that there's a half dovetail cut into the beam shelf. They've got this joint which tapers outwards and what that does is it holds the two sides of the boat together basically. And this joinery connection means that even if the fastenings let go for some reason, the tapering lock of that half dovetail stops the beam shelves from slipping outboard underneath the beams and therefore stops the boat from basically expanding side to side. Now these large beams have also got a shallow shoulder which is just a little recess uh, which the beam goes into before it gets notched away. And the purpose of that shoulder is purely aesthetic really. It makes the joint look much neater because it appears that the beam just disappears into the side of the beam shelf. This is especially useful in the middle of the boat where you have a little bit of tumble home um, because as the sides of the boat curve inwards near the top of the hull, it would actually be very hard or even impossible to fit a beam tightly there on both beam shelves uh, without notching something away. Because it comes in like that, you can't just drop it in. A shoulder like this is not especially common. Uh, it's often seen in other parts of the deck structure, but not always when the beams go out into the beam shelf. So it's really a testament to the quality of the original build uh, that the builders had the skill and the resources to put this extra detail in. YouTube's gonna tell me that I'm using a planer backwards. Yeah, they're not gonna know what you're doing, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they think there's a blade on there. <laughs> So I finished cutting the joints and have dry fitted the first two deck beams there at the stern of the boat. In the last few days, Pete and I have gone over the shape and the location and the length of the carlins and the half beams. Those are all the smaller pieces that fill in the deck structure. And while I've been fitting these, Pete has mostly been cutting out those carlins and half beams and he and Patrick have been planing them and cutting them on the ship saw. Patrick's also been doing a heroic job uh, doing a lot of sanding, sanding all the beams uh, and also the beam shelves in the boat. It doesn't look like much on video, but it's a long, tedious job and Patrick's been working really hard at that.
So there's several different types of beams which make up the deck structure. First of all you've got full beams which stretch from one side of the boat to the other side of the boat. There's two types of full beam. There's what I call standard beams which don't have anything else notched into them and there's what I call king beams which have the carlins notched into them. The carlins are kind of like deck beams but they go fore and aft so they're parallel with the center line of the boat and they go around the deck openings such as the cockpit and hatches. When there's a large deck opening like the skylight or butterfly hatch you've also got half beams and they notch into the beam shelf at their outboard end and they notch into the carlin at their inboard end. Each of the different types of beam has a different set of dimensions which are generally given on the deck structure drawing and there's usually a few which don't quite fit into either of those categories such as the beams underneath the capstan right in the bow of the boat. Glad so you got your safety glasses on there Pete. Getting that good good sanding footage right now huh? Mm -hmm. So throughout this process of planning and preparing to build the deck structure, I've been using two different resources to try and replicate what was originally on the boat. Firstly, I've been using the original plans that Albert Strange drew, but also I've been using my photos and my measurements of the original old deck structure that I took before I removed it. Throughout most of the boat, the drawings and the measurements taken from the original structure actually match up remarkably well. The original builders followed the plans fairly accurately, which has meant that I've been able to use the plans as well while staying true to the original build. However, at some point I did notice that in the bow of the boat, the original builders didn't follow the drawings in regards to some of the deck structure. I noticed that in the drawing the forward companionway hatch, uh, which is one of the entrances down into the boat from the deck, was placed quite far forward in the boat. When I looked at my old photographs and measurements from the old deck structure, I saw that the original builders had actually built that forward companionway hatch further aft than Albert Strange had drawn it. And it's actually really interesting. If you look at the old beam shelf, you can actually see that the original builders did first of all try and follow the drawings and there's actually notches in the beam shelf where Albert Strange had drawn those forward deck beams and so my guess is that they actually installed those beams and then for whatever reason they decided to move that hatch further aft and they removed the beams, installed them further aft and they filled in the joint, the notch that they'd cut in the beam shelf so that it didn't look like an unattractive empty notch. Now what this tells us is that the original builders didn't just put the hatch further off because they weren't following the plans closely or because they weren't concentrating. There actually must have been a really good reason for them to follow the plan originally and then decide that they had to change it and they had to move those beams and fill in the old gaps and go to all that extra effort. Now actually when you lay out 
ballast and beams on the boat, you really can see why they moved it off. There's really not very much space forward of the forward companionway. And there's actually quite a lot of stuff that's got to happen in this area of the boat. The main thing is you've got this huge capstan, a massive metal winch for pulling up the anchor chain. It's really, really very heavy. The bow of the boat is the part which smashes up and down through the waves the most. And so you don't want too much weight really far forward. As well as the capstan, uh, you've got various other things going up in the bow. You've got the bowsprit coming aft that has to be fastened to the Samson post. Then you've got mooring bits. It's also a place in the boat where you'd be bringing the headsails um, to hoist them or to feed them out onto the bowsprit. You might be hoisting or dropping your spinnaker from the foredeck as well. So altogether, it's a busy part of the deck and I can really see why they wanted to move that hatch aft to give a bit more space there. And of course, as that's the way they originally built the boat and it makes sense, it's something that I want to replicate. So based on all my old photographs and the measurements I took, uh, we've drawn up a new deck structure drawing and it more accurately reflects how they actually originally built the boat in the bow area. Viewers are going to start demanding more Patrick footage pretty soon. Yeah, is that right? Too much Leo, too much Pete, too much Checo. <laughs> Why are they going to want to see you, Patrick? They want to see a real shipwreck. <laughs> <laughs> now your viewers can, they can relate to my lack of ability more. <laughs> oh, not in that corner. Shut up. <laughs> um, is there a fatter chisel to use? Clear okay. the top and work your way down, and if it starts blowing out, you can pop that back okay. and come in from the other way. Okay. There you go. Like that. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So this is one of the original half beams. You can see how bad it's got iron sickness in the top of the beam there where it had ferrous metal fastenings through the deck planks. Believe it or not, this would once upon a time have been the same colour as these new deck beams behind me. But I want to have a look at this joint here. This is how the half beams were notched into the carlins and how the carlins were notched into the king beams. Quite a few of the joints in the deck structure are slightly different, there's a bit of variation there, but they're all roughly like this one. And so it's a full dovetail, meaning it's tapered on both sides and it's got a sloped bottom to this lap which sits into the next beam.
I have no idea what to do now. <laughs> Well, it's been a really productive couple of weeks. We've got all the main king beams installed. I've just fitted the lazarette hatch carlins and the guys have been working on fitting the forward beams which go underneath the capstan. It's really great to have another shipwright on the job. So I wanna say a huge thanks again for all your really generous support which has made that possible. Next week, we're hopefully going to be fitting the rest of the carlins and the half beams. And then eventually we'll be able to take out a lot of these cross spools, uh, the beams which I'm standing on. And that'll be really exciting because then we'll get a real sense of the space inside of the boat and the deck structure and the frames should all look really amazing inside the boat. But that's it for now, so I'll see you next time. Cheers. Mm -hmm.